And good evening tonight. A bizarre moment caught on camera. Our exclusive video of a man seen jumping onto a car in traffic and then taking off all his clothes. A viewer shared the video with us on Facebook and we, along with everyone else who saw it, wanted to know exactly what is going on here. Levi Ismail talked to police and witnesses and Levi joins us live with the story. Levi. We'll get this, Len. Three people were injured before the cameras even started rolling. Now, you wouldn't know that from just looking at the video, but police tell us that this man terrorized the people working at this Walgreens. Sunday morning, 10 o'clock in the morning, um, it's a naked man on the car. So many questions, Erica thought. In the meantime. The immediate reaction was, I have to record this. There's already help on the way. There's already people assisting. No one had their camera out. For the next two minutes, Erica couldn't turn away. Neither could anyone else. Traffic coming this way was blocked and traffic going this way was blocked. And people were just stopping and staring. The man bared it all, telling officers what they already suspected. He was high. Officers still wanted more answers, which led them here, just across the street, to this Walgreens. And the things that he was saying as far as chasing someone and being in an altercation, I did hear him say that. Police believe 26 year old Omar Sanchez was high on something when he put an employee in a headlock, stabbed another with a pen and bit a customer who was just trying to help break it up. Sanchez ran into traffic and well, began undressing before police arrested him. As for the driver, she was expressionless, probably in shock, as I'm sure most of us would be. But police say you have to stay calm, lock your door, do not engage and make sure to call police. If it's safe, wait for the cops. Otherwise, escape if you can. You can't govern what people do in their free time, but you can try to bring some sort of awareness to limits and control of yourself. Now, Len Sanchez has been charged with four misdemeanor counts, including two counts of assault. He's still recovering at the hospital at this point, but police tell me that they believe that he's recovering because of the drug-induced condition that he's suffering under. Yeah, Back hopefully he gets the help he truly needs. Levi, thank you for the story. New tonight, a man now charged with murder after getting into an argument with his girlfriend this afternoon. Air 11 was over their home in Richmond where deputies were seen putting bags over the man's hands to test for gunshot residue. Deputies tell us Santana Lasoya claimed he and his girlfriend Brandy Cano were arguing in their garage apartment. He says he picked up a gun and started to leave, but when she tried to stop him, he says the gun went off, hitting her in the head. The couple has a three-year-old child who was not there at the time. The child now staying with relatives. We have an update tonight about the woman who told police someone set her on fire as she slept outside a Houston church last week. That's her in the video. Police now believe the woman set the fire herself. Investigators say several surveillance cameras capture the woman buying lighter fluid from a nearby convenience store, sitting down on the ground by herself and then bursting into flames. Chando Kinawell was badly burned but will survive. She's charged with arson because the fire caused damage to that church. A Houston woman survived a horrific attack. Now she's becoming a voice for other survivors. We first told you about Rachel Bush back in January after she was brutally beaten by someone she thought was a friend. Lauren Tallarico is back on the story. She's live with the very brave step Rachel is taking today. Lauren. Len, since January, this story has been shared so many times with more than $100,000 being donated for Rachel's medical bills. Now she still has a long road to recovery, but she's hoping to help others like her along the way. We do need to warn you, some of the images in this story are graphic. I love you all so much. Thank you all for coming. Tonight, people packed into a back room at Chewy's in River Oaks. I love you so much. To support a woman who needs it. And it can happen to anyone because it happened to me. In January, Rachel Bush was the victim of a brutal assault. She says a man she considered a friend tried to rape her. And when she fought back, he nearly killed her. 
Donovan Jones is still in jail awaiting trial. People are looking at me and they're thinking, oh, Rachel's better now, but I'm not. It's a three to four year recovery. Along with the physical pain comes the overwhelming emotions. There have been times where I have felt like I wish that he would have taken my life because everything that I'm going through is so hard. But then, you know, it's things like today that make me think I have to be stronger than that for other people. You know, I can't give up and I also feel like I need to speak out. Which is why she is. There are so many women who feel like victims and they feel ashamed when something like this happened. Rachel wants to turn her pain into power for domestic abuse survivors, empowered by the thousands of friends and strangers who get her through each day. And in a time like this, you really need people. You need people to stand by you, and I have that. And I'm really thankful. This fundraiser tonight was to help with Rachel's medical bills, which add up to more than $300,000 and counting. If you weren't here tonight, but you would like to help, we have details on how you can do so on our website, khou.com. Len. Yeah, very emotional, but truly standing for Houston, turning pain into power, as you pointed out. Thank you for the story. Well, for the first time, George Foreman talking about the sudden loss of his adult daughter, Frida, to suicide. In a tweet, he shared a memory of when she first told him she wanted to box. He told her, get an education first. Well, he says she brought home the bacon, a degree, three kids and grandkids. Foreman says yesterday was the first Sunday in 42 years without Frida. She's now with her maker. We would like to remind you that if you or someone you know needs someone to talk to, there is help out there. The number for the National Suicide Prevention Line is there on your screen, 800-273-8255. You can call it 24 hours a day. Let's talk weather. If you like the weather today, more of the same tomorrow as we show you the Galleria area from our tower cam tonight. But things could get nasty, I'm told, on Wednesday. Blake Matthews with us tonight. How bad will it get, Blake? Uh, it shouldn't get too bad. We could see some isolated strong to severe thunderstorms with the primary threat with these storms being some high wind. Now, this evening, it's just cloudy here across the Houston area. Not seeing a whole lot in the way of precipitation, so that 20% chance that we had in the forecast never really came to fruition. Temperatures, quite the contrast. 60s up to the north. It was in the 50s most of the day, well to the north. Still holding on to 73 there in Sugarland, 71 at Hobby, and 67 degrees down there on Galveston Island. Again, a cloudy night, but what you can expect over the course of the next couple of days here, we're talking about generally cloudy, warm, and humid tomorrow, isolated strong storms on Wednesday, and significantly cooler by the week's end. Your full forecast just minutes away. Another cool front headed our way. Man, right now deputies are looking for two men wanted for the robbery of uh, and murder of a mother who was a store clerk. That story kicks off tonight's 92nd Nightcap. Deputies need your help finding those people who are responsible for robbing and killing a mother of two. Donna Pena was working as a store clerk at a Shell gas station when the robbery happened on Friday night. Deputies say these two suspects have been linked to up to 10 robberies so far. And on Friday, as we mentioned, they killed that 31 year old mother of two. Questions growing about the safety of airplanes after several incidents involving commercial flights in the past few weeks. Just last night, the engine of a United flight caught fire moments before landing here in Houston. I don't think there's any sort of uh, problem with the Boeing fleet. I think that what we're experiencing right now is just um, a series of bad luck. TxDOT getting an earful about some construction that is not happening along 288. Neighbors without the walls, they want some answers. I don't need an alarm clock. I 288 is my alarm clock. The contractor agreed to consider additions. They told us TxDOT sound guidelines changed and may allow it, but they need at least another month of analyzing to know for sure. Houston will not be hosting the Democratic National Convention in 2020. DNC deciding today that Milwaukee would be home to its next convention. Mayor Turner saying selection committee officials told him just a week and a half ago that Houston was their top choice, but the decision came down to the party's chairman. There is no question, no question at all, that the city of Houston competed very, very well. This is one of the craziest things we've seen in a while. 
Someone driving a pickup truck, yep, with a horse in the back. No horse trailer, just in the bed of the truck. It happened over the weekend in Polk County in the small town of Corrigan. The woman who took this video could not believe what she was seeing. Okay, Cody, you normally see all the crazy stuff. Here we go. Someone else later snapped this picture of the driver of the pickup pulled over in a parking lot and being questioned by a DPS trooper. To our amazement, we learned this apparently is not illegal. But a lot of you on our Facebook page have choice words for the driver, hoping he finds a safer way to transport the animal in the future.